This edition of the Impact Podcast is brought to you by ERI. ERI has a mission to protect people, the planet, and your privacy, and is the largest fully integrated IT and electronics asset disposition provider and cybersecurity-focused hardware destruction company in the United States, and maybe even the world. For more information on how ERI can help your business properly dispose of outdated electronic hardware devices, please visit eridirect.com. Hi, this is John Shigarian. I never could have imagined when we started the Green is Good radio show back in 2006 that it would grow into a big podcast called the Green is Good podcast. And now we've evolved that podcast to the Impact podcast, which is more inclusive and more diverse than ever before. But we did look back recently at some of our timeless Green is Good interviews and decided to share some of them with you now. So enjoy one of our great Green is Good episodes from our archives. And next week, I'll be back with a fresh and new episode of the Impact Podcast. Thanks again for listening. I'm grateful to all of you. This is John Shigarian. Welcome to another edition of Green is Good. This is the Hollywood Goes Green is Good edition with my good friend and partner and co-host, Debbie Levin, the president of the Environmental Media Association. And we're so honored to have with us today the Mr. Environmentalist from Hollywood, Mr. Ed Begley Jr., the famous actor and activist and environmentalist. Welcome to Green is Good, Ed. Thank you so much for having me on. It's an honor to have you on. Let me tell you something. We're so honored to have you. After seven years to have you on, we've, we've been dying for you to come on all these years. So thanks to Debbie and making it all happen with Hollywood. You're on here today. We're a good tag team, she and, she and you I. You guys so. are amazing. Yeah, we have a whole routine. We, we, do, this, we do this really well. We, we even do schools. We've done schools. We've done schools. Weddings, we have a whole bar mitzvahs. Shtick, yes. <laughs> but Ed, Ed is um, a long, long time board member, long, long time board member of the Environmental Media Association and obviously dear, dear friends. But the truth is, is that Ed is, I would say, the face, the beautiful face of Hollywood environmentalists. And he is honestly the, the I, you know, he is what we all strive to be. Like I always say that if, if there's a, a scale of one to 10 of how you are an environmentalist in our industry, Ed is the 12. So, and we're all on the road to so, um, but in the most gracious way, in the most gracious way. So um, why don't, uh, why don't John, why don't you, you have all these questions. Well, no, you know, it's just so amazing how, you know, De you're part of Debbie's and my generation. We're all the same generation, so everyone. We you guys are much younger than me. You're being very kind. He's, carry he's on. Younger. Carry on. No, he's no. younger. I mean, you know, you've been a Hollywood icon for years. But now I told my son last night, who's 22, that you're coming on the show, and he relates to you. Pineapple Express, oh my God. whatever works. Arrested Development. You, you're relevant cross generational in Hollywood. I had no idea. This he's is the great. I'm telling guy. my agent to ask for more money. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so you know, Ed, I met you. Literally, and I was so honored to meet you 10 years ago when Debbie invited me to one of the first Emma events I've ever gone to. And you had ridden your bike there. And I'm like, this is crazy. This is amazing. Hollywood really is into the environment. But as I learned quickly, you're really ground zero for Hollywood's environment, uh, environmental activism. What's, you know, where has this evolved since you got involved 35 or so years ago with activism and environment in Hollywood? And Debbie and you have paired up to sort of now morph it to young Hollywood. How has this whole movement morphed and evolved over these 35 years? It's really gotten, uh, it's gotten very good in that we've engaged, thanks to Debbie, a lot of young people. You know, when I started, I was quite young. I was 20 years old, the first Earth Day, 1970. Wow. And, you know, we talk about all the challenges and we need to keep talking about them. Climate change and the plastics in the ocean, the groundwater contamination, loss of the aquifers, all important to talk about our challenges. But we have to also remember the good news. What's happened since 1970? What's happened in L.A.? 
the air is much cleaner than oh, it was, yeah. John. Yeah. You know, we all did that with catalytic right. converters on cars, combined cycle gas turbines, spray paint booths, all those things, big and small, made the air cleaner. We hoped it would clean up the air, and guess what? It did. And guess what? Guess what? Business people like to breathe clean air too. They want their kids and their grandkids to breathe clean air. So it's been good for the economy, good for the environment, cleaning up LA air. And they need that kind of, you know, technology in Beijing and Hong Kong and Shanghai and these places now in Bangkok, you name it. (laughs) They need that good technology. We can export it to them. So there's a lot of good news out there, but engaging the young people is so important. I do my little area, which is personal action, and I do that fine. But occasionally I cross over to the very important John Quigley, who is just on area, which is a real activism, getting out there. And, you know, he's sitting in trees and doing things that I never dare to do. I went and visited him for like half an hour up there in the (laughs) trees. like, uh, get me out of here. You know, God bless him. He was sleeping up there and staying up there for months on end. So yeah. that's real activism. Well, I don't mean to diminish what I do. It's right. all part of it. You know, but, but he's right. There's like three legs to the stool. You know, we need the activism. We need to get our leaders involved, our, our elected leaders and our corporate responsibility. You know, and you need steady and all three to make that happen. And each influences the and other. And we message. We do. We And we message. Debbie messages very well with Emma. They're great at getting a good message to engage people and to to do the right thing. In Hollywood, a lot of people rightly, many years ago, took us to task. Hey, you talk about cl- us cleaning up the environment and us conserving. What about you guys with your big Hollywood limos and all your stuff and the waste on the set? And we said about changing that, and now nearly every movie set and TV show is very, very green thanks to Emma. Where was your epiphany? Like, why? 35 years ago when you got into it, in 1970... 45 years ago, 45 believe. years ago, sorry. That's where, okay. What, what was the... Where, what, did you grow up that way, or did something happen in college or something happened in Hollywood that made you say, hey, enough of the old way. We got we to gotta change our ways. And I, I got to be the beginning of change myself. Proving that it's a nonpartisan issue. Today is my dad's birthday. Oh. He would have. He died many years ago. Okay. He died in 1970, but he dies with, within a few days of the first Earth Day. And I did all this stuff to honor him as much as anything. Wow. He was a conservative that liked to conserve. Imagine that. <laughs> and he did that, you know. We turned off the lights, we turned off the water, we saved string, we saved tin foil. He got me in Boy Scouts to see nature up close and personal. I decided it was worth preserving. And he was the son of Irish immigrants. He lived through the Great Depression. So, you know, in the model of Teddy Roosevelt, you know, he was that kind of conservative. And we need that now. So I got involved really because of him. I really wow. did. Wow. I, he had set the stage because he also was, one thing he said to me, because I was complaining about the smog in the 50s and 60s, and finally the late 60s before he passed away, he said, Eddie, I know what you're against you're against the smog so am i but what are you for what is your plan what are you going to do to make a difference so i bought an electric car i started riding my bike more i took public transportation rather than what what are you against interesting important right, right. but what are you for what right. are you going to do to change that what are you going to do to make less drilling in ecuador what can you do to accomplish that and we all have a role in that with our consumption and and Ed is is that person who is who is not only talking about this, but Ed, you will see Ed not only on his bike around town, but on the bus, on the metro, um, you know, on on the subway. And this is making yes. Look. Here's a visual aid. My senior pass. We just <laughs> talked about pass, uh, Debbie. Thank it. you for bringing it up. Here's my senior pass, <laughs> and it's good to save the environment. I'm all for that. But what does it cost me on this to take about thirty five cents? Off peak is thirty five cents at the peak rush. Oh, they're going to hit me bad at 75 cents. You can't park downtown for 75 cents or in Hollywood. So this no. is about saving money, too. It is about saving. This is, this is also his other favorite thing about how being an environmentalist is because he's cheap. That, that's your other I'm favorite cheap. line. Yes, Rochelle busted me years ago. You don't care about the birds so much. You're just a cheap old guy. I have quoted you so many times in the last 15 years. I can't even tell you. You not only take the bike, your bike to you know Emma events, but you actually took your bike to the Les Oscars. I did. I in rode the rain, the in the rain, I mean, everybody. I was a little bold going that in that rain. Bold. It was drizzling when I got there, but then I left my cell phone where I was changing my clothes. I was changing into my, you know, I rode over the Quinga Pass, not in the tux, of course. I'd be schwitzing like a hazard again. So I rode over the pass in shorts and what have you. I went to Hollywood and Vine to Bite Size Studios, where we've done stuff together. And I went there and I changed. Oh, great. And it's only a mild drizzle. I'm almost there. I'll meet my friends at Lemley's. Wait a minute. 
where's my phone? I had to go back. And by then it was a downpour. And I got, I was like a wet dog. The best thing is, is that on his wife's Facebook, it's like, I'm getting in the car. My crazy husband is on the bike and on his bike in the rain. That's right. She <laughs> carpooled in a Tesla with somebody who was going anyway, Bill Taylor from the effects department. He's a governor in the effects branch. And so it was no extra carbon, her riding with him. And uh, she met me there and she looked just fine. I was like a wet dog, but I dried off quickly. You, you know, know, that's, the, that's the, the benefits of being a boy though. You know, yeah. that's the good part. Yeah. <laughs> You know, we, we used to follow all what's going on in your house when you had your te- own television show. Yes. Um, what now is going on? I, I understand you're you know building a new house that's all LEED certified or something. Or what's going on in, in your home now with regards to all the green things that you and Rachel are doing? We're building a LEED platinum home right now in Studio City. Wow. That's a rating system from the U.S. Green Building Council. They have a rating system of LEED silver, gold, and platinum. We're right. going for the highest level. I figure if I don't do platinum, who the hell is? Right. There's a lot of platinum uh, office buildings, what have you, but residential platinum is more uncommon. Is, so this, is this from the ground up or restored? From, it's, and that wasn't supposed to be, John. This okay. is what they call mission creep. You know, we started off with uh, a, a simple mission. We're going to invade here and they'll greet us with flowers. Not so. You know, we're going to we were going to do a remodel on this house. Best and, laid plan. I know. And we realized, oh, my God, there's a beautiful oak tree in the south. We knew it all along. But when we really saw with the proper, you know, instrumentation, the way it was going to be shaded near the winter solstice, we had to go to, up to a second story. And in wanting to go up to a second story, we realized the old house couldn't support it. We were going to have four walls we were going to save. We're going to save three, two, one. We're going to save the chimney. We couldn't save any of it. We had to go because there was so much water damage and termite damage, foundation damage. We had to go to a vacant lot. And so we figured that'll be fine, but it's taken a long time because we didn't want to put the old house in a landfill, John. We wanted to recycle it. That's cool. So we had a company come. uh, Habitat for Humanity came and took the easy pickings, the stove and the microwave and the doors and the windows, took all that. And then this company, IRS, not the tax people, a different IRS, Industrial Recycling Services, came and took the house apart. Oh. and took all the wood apart and all the bricks and everything and they sent it down to Mexico and they built a church out of it. No way. Yeah, so why waste all that? That's amazing. So people, our listeners out there, they can recycle their house if they want. Yeah, if yes. you're gonna, rather than just have the bulldozers come and knock it all down in a big pile and put it in big dumpsters, we put it on trucks and what have you and we took it. Now, the, the thing that made it uh, economically feasible, we sent the wood down to Mexico with all the nails in it. They had the time and the inclination to volunteer for the church and take all the nails out and knock all the mortar off the bricks. Wow. Here, it would cost you a lot of money to do that. that you know, you could do it, but. Listen, no matter what denomination you are, that's gotta be good luck. It was very your, good luck. For your new house to build a church yes. out of your old house. Yes, like, just, like, ser- like, seriously just, good karma. Exactly. I mean, that's, that's good yes. karma stuff. And it also, but it took a year to do that. We had to find the right people uh, to do it, so that was a delay, so we've taken a while to do this. So where are you now in the journey? We're very near the end. I can see the finish line up ahead, John. I'm nearing the tape. I'm going to bust through soon. I literally keep emailing Ed. Are you there yet? Are, did you, are, you, are you getting coming close? Up. Getting close? We've got drywall up. We've got insulation in. The electrical, the plumbing's all been done. We're waiting for the flooring. Another delay, but worth it. We're going to have an old barn recycled, that oak wood recycled. Oh. We're having that milled right now from an old barn, and that's going to be used for our flooring. So, so as beautiful. we sit today in what is you and Rachel's mo- June. I'm June. saying June. You're saying June. He's been saying June for a while, so I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with June. June of 2013, June of 2014. This now is June so not even a joke. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about um, Begley's Best. I mean, I want you to be able to share with our listeners what you're doing with Begley's Best now. I had a wonderful company for years called Begley's Best, and sadly, with the 2008 uh, slowdown, the uh, recession, depression, whatever you want right. to call it, that company could not survive. Okay. Uh, they were, A lot of stores... Uh, hunkered down and just stuck with uh, the right. bigger selling ones and we were not one of them so I folded that company up we folded up our tent you know declaring success because we'd given a lot of money to charity right. through that company right. and had wonderful green products but another company came along and said Ed I love Begley's Best I want to do what you did and we'll vet all the products you'll help us vet them make sure they're green or greener than yours right. what are you kidding right. no we'll get EPA designed for the environment certification which you didn't have Ed and other certification we're going to have a whole, whole lot more products. And what's that brand? It's called Begley's Earth Responsible Products. Begley's, and how do our listeners and viewers find out about Begley's Earth Responsible Products? You can go to Begley'sBest.com. I still kept that website. Perfect. Begley'sBest.com. You can go there. They have it at Gelson's. They, they have, have it everywhere. It, they have it a few other places. Yeah. It's going to be in a lot of places very soon. Great. But, 
But and, Begley's Best has it. And they can it. buy it online too. Yes, can you buy can. It. So Begley'sBest.com, you can buy all of your new products. Yes. Right and, and they're, and very, they're good. very pretty. They're pretty. They yeah. look better. Uh, it's it's better than what I had. That I I was doing it out of my garage. Right. I was filling up bottles like this, you know, with a with a. It's a hard cipher. to compete against the major brands when you're just doing it like that. Right? Yeah, I was shipping myself. I was, you know, it was a lot of work, and I finally ran out of time. Let's to do talk it. about, you know, your career right now. At what you're forty uh, is, hotter, <laughs> is, is, is I'm sixty five. Yeah, sixty five is hotter than ever. You know, uh, my son's twenty two, and he asked me to ask you. What's next for you? I mean, when he sees you in whatever works in Pineapple Express and Arrested Development, you're the hot guy in Hollywood at 65. You're this, very kind. What, what's next and what, what are you working on that you're excited about? Right now, yesterday and again Friday, I'll be working on a show with the wonderful Patrick Stewart and the equally wonderful Jackie Weaver from Silver Linings Playbook, that wow. wonderful actress and right. other fine actors and actresses and that. Richard Lewis is in it and we're doing this show called Blunt Talk. It's a Seth MacFarlane show. Tell your son that Seth MacFarlane has a new show. Right. And I'm in it, and it's called Blunt Talk. I think it'll air something like June. And that's on what? That'll be on uh, Stars. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. And then the TBS show is like uh, really. The TBS soon. show that's coming out April seventh, and that is called Your Family or Mine with Richard Dreyfus and Joe Beth Williams. Richard Dreyfus. The wonderful Richard Dreyfus. I've known since we were teenagers. Unbelievable. So I mean, this is like talk about the the, the legends of Hollywood doing teaming up and and doing art together. This is great. Yeah. There's great stuff happening in TV. You see, you know, Kevin Spacey and the wonderful movie stars doing TV shows now. Breaking Bad is one of the best shows you're going to see in your life. Right. I mean, so so the, the whole talk a little bit about that. Ed. The whole Breaking Bad, um, you know, Kevin Spacey and Breaking Bad phenomena with Netflix and AMC and, and all these amazing the network deal is gone. ABC, CBS, and NBC is still wonderful, those brands, but now there's so much more product that's needed to fill these pipelines. Is that what's giving great and amazing artists like you and Richard Dreyfus and Kevin Spacey all these new uh, opportunities that didn't exist 20 years ago? I think so, because you have two things. I, again, I think network TV is just fine, too. Right. There's some good stuff. Good stuff. I've worked in it for years right. myself and probably will again. But what you get with these cable venues, Stars or HBO or AMC, you, can, you don't have the same kind of censorship, number one. And number two, they pretty much leave you alone. Netflix, or wow. I work for uh, Amazon too. You know, and they kind of they hire good people and say, "Hey, you're Vince Gilligan. You know, I'm we're AMC. We'd love to have the, your kind of style of stuff, Vince Gilligan. Do this show. It sounds good. Breaking Bad, and they don't interfere much. You know, they kind of let them do their show. Did Amazon just hire Woody Allen or something? Or just I, make heard, a deal? Yeah. I heard, I heard, I think that, so. Right, yeah, I heard like that. Yeah. Right. And look at what they have with uh, the Jeffrey Tambor show. Right. That's amazing. It's so just brilliant. So, so such a beautiful show. It's a beautiful show. Oh God. Really great. So they're doing great stuff right. uh, in the cable world and the internet world. There's no, not right. really even a cable provider you know i still have a cable i have 18 to you verse to my grown kids and to my 15 year old i'm like a dinosaur they just use netflix to watch stuff they're watching stuff on amazon prime and netflix they don't they're not using the cable hookup they're going straight through uh wireless what's so great is that there's so much you know desire for content yeah and that everybody wants it you know i mean i don't know if it's great but I mean, people are just watching so much they're watching tv and they're watching at home and they're watching when they want and they're no one knows when any what anything is on no one cares right. they're just watching good stuff yeah and they I just think, search for let's right. see destination jeffrey tambor such right. and so. there's right. a show i forgot the name of it, but here it is jeffrey right. tambor there right. we are ed begley exactly and you can just watch and so I think that's attracting amazing talent. Yeah. And so that's that's where people are going. And I th I think for feature films, it's just a little bit of a different audience. You're kind of getting more um, families, kids, sort of big special effects kind of things. And in TV, you get to see, you get to see more character driven. Did, right. did you ever fun. think 20 years ago that at 65 you were going to be busier than ever in your no. career? No. No. Huh. I thought just a year ago when I had a long period of not working, I was bitching to her. I thought, it's over. <laughs> Honey, Debbie, it's over. She's and I'll be Asian. flattening aluminum working, cans, right? not to protect the environment. I'm flattening <laughs> aluminum cans to get the money. I'm out in the park. So, well, I have to say that we have this conversation every couple of years, and, and then I'm like, ah, oh, please, you're going to start working a ton. She said that every time, but this time was yeah. the longest. I'd never had a nine-month period. I had a nine-month period wow. with one day work for scale, and I never had a dry period that dry ever, ever. Wow. I had never had more than three months 
months was with one day's work. I never had anything that it was really. So, so you I figured maybe this is it. I thought it was it. They yeah. finally figured me out. They know I'm a fraud. I knew it all along. Now they I know had I'm confidence. dead. I had confidence. I had confidence. She did. Look. She's correct. <laughs> Let the, the record phone. show. I did. I did quietly. I got him all these jobs. So don't tell anybody. She did. <laughs> with good vibes. You know what? So your career is busy and ever. You got these two amazing series coming out. What is on the horizon for the environment? You know, we're, we live in, of course, we, everyone says this, but it's interesting times, really, with climate change, with water scarcity, and with, with the revolution coming with Solar City and Tesla and all these cool brands coming. How do you feel today? Hopeful, hopeless? What's going on in your mind? Because you've seen, you've, you've had such a richness of history involved as an activist and really doing real stuff. What do you feel uh, where we are right now? You know, there's so much you could be involved in and they're all important. Uh, you know, you could certainly devote your life to climate change and that would be time and money well spent, whatever you would do in that area. You could devote yourself to dealing with the gyre, gyres of plastic out in the ocean. Right. And I'm involved with both those issues. But I'm also focusing a lot these days on water, mm -hmm. uh, specifically here in Southern California, throughout the West and many parts of the world, there's uh, extreme drought. So we're having this cycle of drought. And what Whatever happens, even if we're lucky and we have a few wet years again, and I hope we do, we have to begin to save our rainwater, number one. We have to begin to use our gray water, number two. Number two. Number three, we have to get our agricultural friends, people in the world of agriculture, to use different practices and better practices with growing crops. And maybe even we have to investigate if it's really the best idea to grow some of these very thirsty crops in California, a place where all the water is coming from outside. Again, talk about a stool, like I said before, the metaphor of a stool with three legs. You got three legs to the stool of Southern California getting water. Colorado River, you have the Owens Valley, right. and you have the San, San Francisco, San Joaquin Delta. Right. Three legs. If one of them even just gets knocked off an inch or two, it's going to be wobbly and we're going to fall. So if something happens to one of those, and, and that's coming, we have to be prepared. And we could meet, according to Andy Lipkus, who knows water issues very well, and many other uh, experts in hydrology, we could meet half of our demand in Southern California, in LA, I should say. Right. In LA, we can meet half of it from rainwater, if we collect our rainwater and stop letting it go to, down these concrete channels out to the ocean. Right. We can capture it in two ways. One, with rain tanks, like I have buried under my property, my new home, a 10,000 gallon rainwater tank, 10,000, wow. or you can and have it permeate into the soil another good way and then clean up some of these wells and what have you we have a lot of trichloroethylene and bad things in well water right. and groundwater clean that up in the san fernando valleys clean it up in the san gabriel valley and use that water more by letting it percolate down so that's what we need to do well you know ed we're going to have you back on again to talk about your new series next time you have a new series coming out good and to talk more about the environment debbie and i are going to have you back on to continue this discussion um, for our listeners out there, look up Ed Begley, Ed Begley Jr. and all the great work he's done historically and his two new series coming out or buy his responsible environmental products on Begley'sBest.com. For Debbie Levin, I'm John Shigarian. You're on Green is Good and Ed Begley Jr., you are truly living proof that green is good. Thank you, John. This episode of the Impact Podcast is brought to you by Closed Loop Partners. Closed Loop Partners is a leading circular economy investor in the United States with an extensive network of Fortune 500 corporate investors, family offices, institutional investors, industry experts, and impact partners. Closed Loop's platform spans the arc of capital from venture capital to private equity, bridging gaps, and fostering synergies to scale the circular economy. To find Closed Loop Partners, please go to www.closedlooppartners.com.